Have a good day. A cross-party political cover-up comes to Canberra. Not mandatory, but masks very much in mode. At least for those who aren't working from home. This year the House has been adapting to uh, the changing circumstances, as have all Australians. In the House, Labor's deputy leader, the first to ask a question COVID style. How many more aged care residents have to die before the Prime Minister accepts full responsibility? 335 aged care residents have died of COVID-19 in federally funded, federally regulated homes, most of them in Victoria. Again, I offer my apologies to the residents and families of those affected in those facilities. It was not good enough. The aged care minister also offering contrition for the loss of life, as well as not being on top of his brief when he fronted a parliamentary committee last week. I should have had the data on Friday and I apologise for not having done that. And I take full responsibility for not having that information available to me at the time. A Royal Commission has been poring over the weaknesses of the system. Its interim conclusion, that the system's failing and needs fundamental reform. The failings that they are dealing with go back over many, many years. Mr. The Prime Minister saying the government won't wait for the final report to respond. In this year's budget and if need be, Mr Speaker, the, the mid-year statement as well. In other words, we can expect a lot more money being directed at aged care from October in boosting the workforce, telehealth and streamlining intervention when things go wrong. For many, this can't come soon enough. With about 1,400 aged care residents infected, there'll be many more who'll perish. And as the death toll rises, the clamour for reform's only going to get louder. Victorians endured two weeks of quarantine to make it into Parliament, but it wasn't an entirely cleansing experience for one. Mark, it's an important piece of the team. Assistant Treasurer Michael Sukars links with one-time Victorian Liberal factional warlord Marcus Bastian has got Labor demanding answers. It's a test for Scott Morrison to stamp out the corruption in the Victorian branch. The Nine Networks suggested Mr Sukar had once worked with Mr Bastian on plots to target moderate Liberals and even hired his wife as a staffer. They've referred those matters to the Department of Finance for review and that's the appropriate thing to do. Marcus Bastian's now quit the party. Andrew Proben, ABC News, Canberra.